Here's an argument that I put out on my stair building channel, and it's whether or not you should cut the bottom of the stairs like this and use this board to prevent the stairs from sliding down because this notch is in it instead of doing it like this. And this method right here is the method I've used on every set of stairs that I attach to a concrete foundation. If it was a wood floor foundation, then I would eliminate these boards and have the stringers sit directly on top of the floor sheathing without a kicker because the nails or screws or whatever building hardware you're going to use will prevent the stair stringers from moving. And how do I know this? Because I've never came across a stairway where these connections actually failed. And the biggest arguments I have against this is supporting a notched piece of lumber at the front and not the back, or the fact that you have an untreated piece of lumber touching the concrete, and that might not be a problem on an interior stairway. However, you would have that problem if there was a gap between the bottom of the stringer, and I see this all the time. And if you do have a gap, and you're supporting everything at the front, and there's enough pressure on the stair stringers, you could end up cracking the bottom of the stringer, just like this. And how do I know this? Because I have seen this before. So in my opinion, this is a superior assembly method that will allow the stringer to be supported in the back like a roof rafter, right? If I was going to build a roof rafter, it would have some type of support like this, especially if it would be sitting on top of a wall and not like this. So if you're not going to support a roof rafter in the front, then why would you do it to a stair stringer? Another thing that you need to think about is by having the connection in the front, the back of the stringer could actually move. And I've seen that before, but you're not going to have that problem if you can use this method here to fasten the back of the stair stringer to a framing plate that is fastened to the concrete to eliminate another problem you could end up with by using the other method. And of course, if you have any arguments, you want to use the kicker method, it's just awesome and you believe it's awesome, feel free to share your reasons why in the comment area. And as a follow-up to this video, I went ahead and installed a video that I made for my other channel to see if this method might work better for you than the original kicker method called out on most building plans. This is part two to a video that I made. I will put the name and a link to that video in the video description box. And I think I figured out a way to have both what I would like to see, which is something like this, and the design you're going to see here in a few seconds. For those of you who believe that this design right here won't work for you because somehow the stringers are going to slide forward even though they're nailed and securely fastened to some base framing plates that are securely fastened to the concrete or base framing plates that would be securely fastened to a wood framed floor because either you or the architect think that this is a superior design. I cannot see it. I'm never going to see it and I'm never going to agree to it even though I saw this design on almost every set of building plans I worked with. I never used it. I never used it. My dad never used it. And there's no way I'm ever planning on using it because it just doesn't make sense. And the reasons for that can be found in the other video. For those of you who just want a brief explanation, a lot of it has to do with making this notch here and then fastening the stringers to this plate here. And in some cases I've seen a gap here and I don't like the gaps. The gaps can cause the stringers to break break. And something like this might work fine on a wood framed floor where you can drive more fasteners through the stringers into the wood framed floors or even use framing hardware where on a concrete slab you can see where you're only going to be able to attach it to the base framing plate, not to two base framing plates like you would have seen in the previous example. So what about this design here? Is this something that might work better for you? You're going to get both of the framing plates, which is what I would like to see, plus a couple of notches that, in your mind, might prevent the stairs from sliding forward. 
even though these notches wouldn't be necessary if the stringers are securely fastened to the base framing plate. So something like this would make me happy and make those of you happy who believe that this notch right here is somehow going to work better than the very first example I provided in the video. And if that one seems like too much work, what about this one here? Install the framing plates like I would like to see them installed and have a notch at the back of the stringer, providing us with another method that might work better than the second example in the video. You're going to be able to use two framing plates that you can use to attach the stringers securely to the foundation and have your notch here to prevent the stairs from sliding forward, to prevent the stringers from sliding forward if this is actually something you believe will happen again even though i've never seen it happen and if you don't like that idea what about this one here grab a huge piece of lumber and securely anchor it to the foundation don't just secure it in the front or in the back otherwise you could end up with the board twisting and forcing one side of the stringer up and that's probably not going to happen if you have enough base framing anchors to prevent that from happening here is another one of those questions that i have been asked numerous times and i'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there so if you're just looking for the answer then it's going to be between 11 and 10 inches for the step and between seven and seven and a half inches for the riser and to provide you with a good example of this most of the stairs i built and i've built over a thousand of them were between seven and three quarters of an inch and seven and a quarter inch and almost all of the treads were 10 inches However, for those of you who want a little more information, feel free to stick around and we will take a look at a few other examples that don't fall within the seven to seven and a half inches, yet will still provide you with a comfortable step. So again, that seven to seven and a half inches is not written in stone and neither will be the length of the tread, especially if you're building a stairway for people who have some type of disability and might even require wider steps and smaller risers. Which brings us to our next example, and that will be to provide you with an idea of how stairs become a little steeper. If the depth of the steps are smaller and the riser heights are taller. So for example, this stairway, we have a nine inch wide tread and an eight inch tall riser. And a stairway like this would be difficult for most people to use. However, this one won't. And when we come over here, this one won't either. And it all starts to make sense once you start to examine the different angles that are produced by having wider steps and smaller risers. And I don't think you need to be the most intelligent person on the earth to figure out that a smaller angle is usually going to provide us with a safer stairway. And I'm basing this off of the simple fact that if you were to fall, if you were to slip and lose your balance and fall down a stairway like this, then there's a good chance you're not going to fall as far as you would on a stairway that is going to be steeper and with smaller steps that might not allow you to regain your balance. And each one of these stairways has the same amount of steps, yet provide us with three different angles. Now I need to point out that a stairway like this one here with a smaller angle isn't always going to work out for a particular project that might require a shorter stairway or a stairway that's going to fit in a smaller space. And if that's the case, then you're going to have to build the steeper stairway or redesign the project, especially if you're someone who foresees yourself living in that same building or working in that same building as you get older and might not want to climb a steep set of stairs. So hopefully at the very least that got you started in the right direction. 
And probably about the most important thing you can take out of this video is the fact that you will need to check with your local building and safety department if you have one to verify the minimum and maximum riser and tread depth and height for an individual step. Because the last thing you want to do is build a stairway that's going to work best for your physical size and future disabilities only to find out that you weren't allowed to build it in the first place.